tonight what I'm going to be tying here as part of our segment is something I call the orange burner nymph. Um, I usually tie these in size 16, size 18. Um, sometimes I might go 14 just depending. But what they are is they're a nice small little nymph and they mostly got a lot of orange highlights on them. What we're going to be starting off with on this tie is we're going to be using a fulling mill check nymph hook size 16 and we're using a 3 seconds gold cyclops bead that'll be our bead front also along with this tie we're going to be using UTC fluorescent orange and 70 so I'm going to do is get some thread wraps started on here And I'm going to tie in my rib. The rib I'm getting ready to use is UTC Ultra Wire in red, the small size. And like all my patterns that are midge style, um, I'll, I'll tie my wire in up front and take it all the way down. Of course, I just tied that in on the wrong side, but we will take care of that. Yep, there we go. Spin it over. And we'll take it all the way down to about two millimeters above there. Now, we really want this orange to show through, so I'm going to come up fill in most of the gaps as I can, try to create a smooth body. And then I'm also going to come down again. These black nickel hooks, um, when you're tying with this small UTC thread on them, you gotta make sure you make a couple of passes so you can actually get the color to stand out. If you haven't noticed, it's still kind of doling just a little bit through, and you can see up top where it's only got a couple. Well, I just slid that in the way. But um, you can see up here where I've only got a couple of wraps, how that, that hook shines through. What we're going to do at this point is I'm going to take some of this pheasant tail. I've got some dyed red pheasant tail, and that's kind of what I make the buggy highlight look with. I'm going to grab just two of these off. I'm going to tie them in at the bottom. A couple of loose wraps. I'm going to pull them down until I get them to where I want them. And then I'm going to go up and once again make sure I keep wrapping this so I got a smooth body because I want this orange to show through and not get too clogged up by the hook. Once we're there, we can go ahead and start wrapping this pheasant tail. When you wrap the pheasant tail up on this one, we want to segment it off. We don't want to do touching turns like we would normally when we're like tying a pheasant tail nymph or something like that. We want it to segment out. So it kind of makes segments. Cross our thread. Actually, I messed that up. So, here's what you do in those cases. If you mess something up, and you'll mess stuff up, it, it happens to the best of us. So you can just see me, it happened to me doing a live video stream. Um, it never hurts. As long as you didn't pull it or break it, we'll just go all the way back. And since I had that little mess up, we get to see this all again. So, we'll make our wraps, make sure they're not touching wraps. I'll make those all the way up the body. Then when we get here, we'll cross our thread. And hopefully this time when we cross our thread, it actually takes. And I just bumped the camera again. That's something I need to work a little bit better on. We'll go ahead and tie that pheasant tail off. And if you'll notice, that kind of ribbed kind of made like a hairy insect looking rib on our fly. A lot of people usually can establish this uh, 
I'm doing stripped peacock curl and I leave one side on the peacock curl. Um, on these smaller flies you can also pull it off with pheasant tail in the same fashion. Now what we're going to do next is I'm going to take this and we're going to counter wrap that pheasant with this red wire. This will kind of help keep your pheasant tail from breaking and it'll also add a little bit of color, a little bit of sparkle to your ribbing. So we've actually put like two secondary, we put two ribbings on here. We put the, the original red pheasant and then we also put on the wire. The wire doesn't show up that great. I mean, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but you can barely, barely see where the wire is cross-strapped over. But it does add a little shine to it. And when we get that done, we can helicopter that wire out of there. We can go back. Usually I start my thorax pretty much in line with that hook point. So if I hold if I hold my thread straight down or just let it balance out, I should be about at that hook point when I get ready to do my thorax. That's where I do my thorax on these. And for that we're gonna use a little bit of that SLF Wopsy Prism SLF red. And we're gonna dub that on here. Sometimes if your your bead rolls on you, you can bring it back. Okay, now I'm gonna do my standard four three. Four whip finishes followed by three. Doing that so fast, I lost track of my count. And so we've got the fly to this point. It looks pretty decent, but what I'll take is uh, I attached a little bitty piece of Velcro to my clippers. It works pretty good because I can get in under the hook, I can get in over the hook, I can get some sign. It also has a little bit of taper and a curve to it, so it, it helps out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this stuff and we're going to just tease out this dubbing a little bit with it. And usually when I tease this dubbing out, I'll come back in with my comb or handy dandy toothbrush if you've got a spare one and I'll pretty much try to comb it all down and if you comb it all down you'll see you get about to the hook point if you lift that up and stretch it out I always take a diagonal from the hook eye to the hook point cut that off and I will leave that as my legs so then you can just take your handy dandy little brush, tease that stuff back out. You've got a good pretty length. And there is your orange burner in size 16. Take care and thank you for watching.